Hey, it's Tuesday. You know what that means? Turkey Tuesday. It's Turkey Tuesday. Hey, let's talk turkey. All right, so today what we're gonna talk about is static pressure. Static pressure is what helps the efficiency of the barns in terms of their ventilation. And for this time of year, that is cooling. And so we've had some issues with static pressure in the last few days. And boy, if I could figure that out, I'd sure be happy. But let's come over here to the controller. This sheet here shows that our low static pressure can be as low as, I think that's uh, 0 0.001. But we don't want it to get any higher than a 0.22. That's a high static pressure. Okay, so what is that? That's the inside pressure versus the outside pressure. And here on the side of this controller, right there are two hoses. One for the, what is outside pressure versus this hose right here, inside pressures. Okay, so it's monitoring this. This computer module is monitoring that static pressure all the time. Let me see if I can get it to come up here at the light, there we go. All right, so here it is. Right now we're holding, and, and this computer kind of tries to monitor and to set and keep a set number of 0.13 actually it could be higher than that you might want to see that higher than that because that means that inside the air is pulling um, is moving more so what it'll do is it'll change the number of fans that are on or in this case maybe more so where the placement of the tunnel curtain is or the vents so it can close those and increase the pressures so right there, it moved a little, but there's nothing, nothing increasing uh, or changing here to do that. And that's usually based on presets in the computer system. We'll adjust that. So static pressure, what we're looking for there is the greater efficiency of the air that's moving. And the air that is moving, every fan that is on is one degree of windshield. So the air temperature is still the same, but you get that uh, uh, the breeze causes that windshield, thus cooling the barns. So when we get up, so like right now, it says right here, we're at 72 degrees. We get up to the 80s and 90s and the outside temperatures are, you know, close to 100. Um, inside temperatures will maybe be in the 80s, but with 14 degrees, there's 14 fans, 14 possibilities of that one degree of wind chill. And so we would get uh, in the neighborhood, you know, so if it was if it was 90, we'd be somewhere around 76 uh, and so on. If it's 100, we're gonna be around 80, 86 or so. That's considerably cooler. And actually I tell um, folks that work for us, like the girls or, or anybody, um, if they'll go get in that, like they're weed eating and it's really hot, go get in the cool cell room for a while and you can cool down. So static pressure is kind of the efficiency of the air moving inside there. And, and the better job we do with that number, and I, like I say, I think I might want that number to be a little different. The better job I do with that, the, the better uh, cooling inside the arms. Now, one of the problems that we get into with that, during a low pressure event, like a storm that comes through, we will actually have uh, the barns will kind of get out of balance and it'll start sending alarms to us because this is also connect, connected to a modem or a phone line, outside phone line. And it'll call on and carry on. <clears throat> this particular um, computer is set up for every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes it'll send you an alarm, which is great. I love that. Except on a day when the low pressure is moving through at two o'clock in the morning. So occasionally we go through and calibrate these. There's a way to calibrate and then readjust. 
Um, I've got one. This is barn one here. This is barn one. And over there is barn two. And so I'm really starting, trying to get used to being a weatherman. That way, that way, there we go. Uh, barn two. This one here is some shape or form. Every time we open the garage door, which is there, and it wants to screw up the, uh, wants to screw up the pressure. So anyways, that's a little bit about static pressure. If you have theories or thoughts on that, or you're in the turkey business and you understand that better than me, hey, send me some comments and tell me how to, how to do that better, because I'd appreciate it, it'd be great. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe because that helps all of us, uh, helps us to know if this is something that's interesting, which it is and isn't, you know, I mean, it sort of is, sort of isn't. But uh, also, as far as we know, this is the only commercial turkeys in the YouTube world. Today, static pressure, big deal. By the way, I never thought about that. Um, you can you can suck the inside guts out of this thing. Uh, it is possible. Uh, I had one time I was getting pretty close. Uh, if something goes a little bit haywire and everything stays shut, like in, in a frozen setting, and the fans kick on, uh, it can be a bad deal. So, uh, static pressure is something that's important to it that's monitored, and it's monitored continuously, all the time. All right, anyways. Welcome to barn three. Just got done with my chores this morning. And uh, again, we're talking about static pressure. So as a recap of static pressure, the greater or the higher, higher the pressure, the greater the efficiency or the greater the pull of the air coming through there, which thus cools them down. So we want a higher air pressure more static pressure in order to, the air is really moving, it's pulling through. So we would tighten the vents or the uh, tunnel curtain in order to increase that to get maximum cooling and uh, or ventilation depending on what time of the year it is. So even in the winter time, we have uh, static pressure. We wanna maintain a certain static pressure according to the vents opening and closing because we want to change the air in the barn. We want to get fresh air in and then exhaust the uh, air that is in there. And so that is what static pressure is doing. Ah, a little warm in there this morning. We're out here actually. This is a small room. Barn three has a smaller entryway. So anyways, again, uh, hey, if you know anything that can help us to be more efficient, comment, let us know, and uh, we'd appreciate that. If you're a commercial turkey grower, growing tom turkeys, even if you're growing hens, uh, I'm interested. Um, chickens uh, is a totally different type of poultry, but maybe you've learned some things uh, that can help because where we're at located, there's not really, I can't go to my neighbor and ask like we can in other crops. Like I can ask you know, when we started doing the hay, I asked the neighbor and they kind of taught me and got me going in the right direction. And when I had an issue, I could just walk over there. Hey man, how, what do you do different? Can't do that here. So like, subscribe, all that if, if you're willing. Uh, don't like if you don't like it. If you don't like it, you know, hey, it's free country. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Hope it was interesting for you. If you got more questions, comment. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Talk to you next time. Don't forget to take five. It'll only take a minute, which I got to get to work. So see you later.